Alrighty, so I have a question for you guys. How many of you out there own a smartphone or a tablet? Yeah, kind of what I expect. There's actually four hands that aren't up. I'm impressed. Um, it's really interesting because right now we're in the middle of what I would consider a mobile revolution. These smartphones and tablets are everywhere. And if you look at the announcements on the news, it seems like every other week there's a new smartphone coming out from yet another company and another tablet coming out from another company. It's never ending. Now what's cool about this particular revolution for you guys is the fact that uh, technology revolutions really favor you. Because you figure this stuff out and get using it and make it integrated into your lives so much faster than grown-ups do. Uh, how many of you here have had to help your parents or grandparents figure out how to use their <laughs> smartphones and tablets? Yeah, kind of what I thought. And what's also interesting, though, about this particular revolution is it's not just about the physical devices that we've got. It's also about the cool apps that you have running on those devices. Because your smartphone, take away the apps, it's the same cell phone your mom and dad have. That's not as much fun. So it's the apps that really make all of these cool devices shine. When I was a kid, my dad brought home our first computer. It was a TRS-80 with 16K of memory from Radio Shack plugged into our t television. And I would get these books and magazines which had programs that you would literally type in line by line from the books and run on your computer. And it was the coolest thing because you were creating these programs from nothing. Now, the first program I wrote myself all from scratch was a choose your own adventure program. You are in a hallway. You reach a junction. Do you turn right or left? <laughs> That was pretty much how complicated my program got. But it was so cool. When I'd drag one of my friends over and make them play the game, to watch them going in, I'd sit there with like bated breath to see would they turn right and find the treasure? Or would they turn left and get eaten by the monster? It was just awesome and it was an exciting time because we were creating something from nothing just by writing a few lines of code. And with the world of apps, it seems like some of that excitement has kind of come back again of creating something from nothing. There are people who, who pick up their phones and look at them and go, well, I could write an app like that. And they're doing it. In fact, there are students all over the world who are building apps for these tablets and phones. Now, admittedly, I think tomorrow, if you guys actually sat down for an afternoon and really focused for three hours, anyone here in this room could build an app and publish it to a store. Three hours. I really believe that. Now admittedly, it's probably going to be like a flashlight app, or one of those ones where you press the button and it makes a whip noise. Thank you so much for those. But even a simple app serves a purpose, because it, it gets you started. You can figure out how this technology works and, and how these apps work. Um, and let's not discount the fact that sometimes even simple apps can be useful. I was out camping last summer, and sure enough, I spent a little too much time uh, up at the store kind of thing, and by the time I left the store, it was dark. Had to find my way back to my campsite, so what did I do? Took my little flashlight up, used that to find my way back to my tent, and it worked. So even a flashlight app could be useful, but please, having said that, uh, we don't need 150 new flashlight apps. <laughs> We've got enough of those. But you can start with something simple, just to get learning, but then I'd like to challenge you guys to take it to the next level, to think a little bigger. Could you build an app that would help you, that you would actually find useful? For example, maybe you could build an app that would help you keep track of your homework assignments. Or maybe you could build an app that could help you uh, study for math tests or geography tests, or to conjugate your French verbs. Oh, fish it out of an app. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just want an app to help figure out what you can do with your friends on the weekend. Even that could be helpful. Or maybe think a little bit bigger. How about after you graduate and that whole work world thing kicks in? Could you build an app that would help people at work in their jobs? I guess it depends a little bit on what job people have. For example, uh, like think of your teachers. What apps would help them? I can imagine that uh, it might be useful if there was an app for substitute teachers. So when they arrive in your classroom, they have the photos and the names of everybody in the class. That'd be nice, and little notes on maybe who has allergies and where their EpiPens are stored, and maybe some extra notes from the teacher on which kids they have to keep an eye on. Might be helpful. But you could go even bigger than that. Maybe you do some volunteer hours 
for a charity or a cause that you feel strongly about? Could you build an app that would help them? Why not for food banks? I often go sort food at the food banks. It's something I do every year. And why don't we have an app that I could use when I'm in the grocery store? So I'm walking through the aisle in the grocery store. I can pull out my phone and look up what food my local food bank needs right now. So I can find out, oh look, they're low on peanut butter and pasta. I'm going to pick some of that up, put it in the Dropbox on my way out. It wouldn't be that difficult. They say a small group of dedicated people can make a difference. I really believe it because I've seen it from students. There was a group of students in Australia, and let me tell you sort of the story of what they decided to build. Anyone here had pneumonia ever? I've had it once. Yeah, okay, so a couple of you had pneumonia. Pneumonia sucks. You get that, you know, you feel tired, you feel sick, you're kind of miserable, you miss some school, which is a bonus, but you can't play any sports. And you know, you take these antibiotics and two to five weeks later, you're back on your feet. And okay, that's over and done with. In Africa, pneumonia is actually one of the top killers of infants. I had no idea. Because in Canada, honestly, pneumonia is just a nuisance. It's not something that kills people. So this group of students in Australia, they said, that's horrible. Well, is there something we can do about it? And it turns out the reason it's such a big killer is because if you're not a really well-trained healthcare professional, it's very hard to diagnose it correctly, especially in the early stages. So what happens is a mom brings her you know, one-year-old who's coughing to the doctor in some rural village, and the healthcare worker you know, pulls out his desk open and goes, yeah, they're coughing, they'll be fine, take them home. And two weeks later, they're not getting better and they're starting to wheeze, so the mom brings the baby back in, and the doctor at this point goes, oh gosh, it's pneumonia. But at that point, even when they start treatment, it's too late and the baby actually dies. So this group of students said, there's got to be something we could do. So what they did is they actually worked with a group and had a special stethoscope built that when you connected it, it would actually record the sound of the breathing. And then it would send that sound, it connected to a phone, and on the phone, it would actually uh, take that recording and take it over to a server there was a program on the server that would actually analyze the recording and look for the characteristics that indicated it was pneumonia. Then it would just send a message back to the little phone. So this healthcare worker would look at their phone and it would say, this person may have pneumonia. At that point they could say, okay, let's send them to the city for treatment or let's start treating it right now while well, you could still save them without them necessarily having the extensive advanced training. Now you guys are going, that's Amazing, but uh, Susan, I don't know how to build uh, custom stethoscopes and fancy programs that will analyze and determine if someone has pneumonia. That's a little beyond my availability right now. Let me tell you another story. There was a group of students in Ireland, and one of their classmates was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So she went to the doctor, and the doctor gave her a journal and said, every day I need you to keep track of how you're feeling today, uh, I need to know if you have any symptoms you want to report, and you need to keep track of your injection sites every day. Because if you inject yourself two days in a row in the same site, you end up getting a really big bruise, which is no fun. Her friends sort of looked at that and said, pen and paper? Really? Honestly, in this day and age? There's got to be a better way. So they decided to build a simple phone application. So she gets up in the morning, starts her phone app, and it says, how are you feeling today? Good. And it says, do you have any symptoms? It gives her a little, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit nauseous and I'm kind of tired. Cool. So then it goes, actually shows her a little diagram of the human body and she taps where she's going to give herself her injection. Really simple. And then they built a really simple web page for the doctor that would actually, uh, be, so the data she entered on the phone could be read by a doctor when she went for her appointment. It's not complicated what they did. It was just really smart. And that could be used by anybody with a phone, anywhere in the world, that's making an impact. The technology to make a difference is already here right now, and it's already in your hands. You can actually build an app that will make a difference right now. You may encounter some obstacles. You may need a little bit of help from time to time, but you can do it. There was a commercial a few years ago, but I had loved the slogan from it. It said, those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So what I want you to ask yourselves is, 
am I crazy enough? If you think you might be, the first step is just to start exploring, see what the technology can do. There's a series of websites up here, so you can learn how to get started building an app on any of the big mobile platforms that are out there. Imagine it, what you can do. Build it, and then all of us can live it. Thank you very much.